Hi, it's Ali here. Uh, apologies for not doing a market commentary on Monday. We had a few issues with Zoom ahead of my room session, so we had to sort all of that out. So here today, first I want to start with a update on our first day of the month strategy. Congratulations to those of you that came in on our Beat the Banks program and traded this for the first time. 5% um, win on the month, which is really good so yeah got a five percent win on the month and importantly we just do some stats five percent win this month uh year uh, sorry for 2020 we are sitting at uh 21.19 percent return and year to date so last 12 months so last 12 months we're sitting at 36.25% ROI. So for trading once a month on one strategy, that is pretty good. And only having 2.5% of your account value at risk at any one time. These figures are not returns on the trades. These are returns on the entire account. So it's going really well. And importantly, very, very important, the fact to remember is we've got 20 years worth of back-tested data on this. And we've also been trading this as a community just over three years in a live environment. I've been trading it, a version of it for just under five. Knowing that in the last um, the last few months, since the start of the year, we've basically had five winning months out of the last six. So we've had five winning months out of the last six. As a trader, without trying to burst anyone's bubble who's listening to it, who's come in on their first month and got 5%, Knowing that, knowing the stats over 20 years of back tested and three years live, I would expect to be hitting a little bit of a losing run at some point because we've had five winning months out of six. And that is taking us away from the mean or taking us away from the average. So you always have to stay balanced as a trader. Yeah, it's hitting a nice little run. You know, it's very easy to um, to let the fear and greed kick in and think oh right i want to throw more money at it which is fine so you should only consider putting more money into this if that was a plan anyway don't jump in because you're 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 making money at the moment because that will it will shift it will go back and it will revert back to the mean but the great thing about it is because every every trade is a two to one winner then that means even if you are hitting a slightly lower win loss ratio then 80 odd percent you will still be making money so hitting a bit of a good run that doesn't mean it won't continue but it is a little bit above the mean at the moment. But certainly for those of you listening, if you want to consider this and have this as part of your strategy portfolio, or even if you are struggling with your trading or you haven't made a decision on what you want to do, the beat the banks option is a really good one. Averages um, on our testing 18% per annum year on year. Doesn't mean it does that every year. Some years it's better, some years it's slightly less. We had no losing years on the testing. And we're three years in and we're averaging about 17% per year for the three years of live with no losing years as yet. So obviously message us if you are not doing that and you want to you wanna get involved. So that's Beat the Banks. So good, all good there. Let's go and have a little look at the indices because despite all of the news that you're seeing at the moment, uh, the main indices are pushing up. I'm going to go to the weekly chart of the... S&P, we talked about this close that we had last week above the, or we talked about a close above the 50 moving average, which we got last week. And then you can see we've just taken that high out here. So at the moment, main indices have recovered nearly the entire, well, I'd say two thirds, almost three quarters of the move. If you look at the NASDAQ, almost up to its previous highs. So a big move up on the NASDAQ there, almost up to its all time highs up here. Uh, now it could be we get up there, there could be a really uh, big step of divergence. So the indicator is showing potentially that there could be divergence between this high and if we get up to this side, but we'll have to wait and see on that on the weekly. If we go and just have a little look at the NASDAQ on the daily, and I know we don't spend a huge amount of time on the NASDAQ, but it is getting closer to that level, very flat on the MACD, on a daily basis but it it looks like we could well get a retest up here and that will be interesting to see what that does to the Dow and S&P if we look at the S&P here the S&P is still under 
its weekly 50. So that's what I'm watching is whether or not we get a reaction to the weekly 50 on the S&P. We're still hovering around the monthly 50. Oh, sorry, not the S&P, the Dow. So let me, re let me rephrase that. It is the weekly 50 on the Dow that we're under. We're obviously above that on the S&P. And on the Dow's monthly, we're still hovering around the 21 moving average, whereas on the S&P, you'll notice that we've cleared that and we're above it. So the NASDAQ and the S&P are leading the Dow at the moment. So we're going to keep a close eye on those. Now, interestingly, we've gone from not having a huge amount of potential setups here. We're looking at a trade on Aussie New Zealand we've been tracking for a while. But suddenly the number of potential trades across six of our string swing strategies has gone up hugely. And interestingly, in correlation with that, and I can't, I, I say in correlation, I've seen Euro US dollar move a little bit in the last few days. So I can't say that that is why we've got more um, opportunities. It's just interesting that you've seen Euro US dollar, um, and I'll go down to the daily so you can see this euro has broken out of what has been this sideways move here now we're not we're not up at any clear significant highs we just had a retest of this little area here but certainly there's been a bit of a breakout on euro a bit of a move up as you can see there now if we look at pound against the US dollar uh, that's coming potentially back up for a test of the April highs so the major currency pair Euro US dollar is seeing a little bit of movement and that could be why we're now seeing a few of our potential trades coming in on different cross pairs at the moment. We're certainly starting to feel like we're stacking up potential opportunities. Now it's important as a trader that just because you've got lots of potentials that doesn't always correlate into lots of actual trades because you're waiting for the specific criteria to set up. But it's certainly good to have a few more trades for us to look at. All right. So gold. Now, actually, gold, if we go and have a little look at gold, it's sitting a little bit sideways and has been now sort of April, May. But again, trapped between the highs of uh, here, which about 17.66, 17.48, just that in between there. And it's just it's, it's trickled up in terms of higher lows, but it's sitting in this gap at the moment. Lower highs, higher lows. Uh, we'll have to see as and when uh, gold moves out of that little range. Silver's had a little bit more of a move, move up consolidated and you see here we're just it's having a little bit of a retracement we're keeping an eye on this for the 2020 highs 2019 highs that little bit higher but we are keeping an eye out for this area of resistance up here for some potential trades up there and some of our guys are looking at a potential with the trend move if they get enough of a pullback in this zone here this is kind of the last chance saloon for a pullback in here because you've got the previous highs you don't really want to be trading with the trend when you're coming into a resistance so that's silver uh, oil obviously we had the winner on oil uh, oil has been sitting very close to these um, these highs just here on the 3rd of April not a significant support or resistance it's just been just been consolidating close to that we've just got above that for me I would be looking at the weekly 21 now on oil so the weekly 21 is sitting at on my futures chart at 4068 so I'll be looking to see if we can get a reaction right in at that point that will be the key for me is whether or not we get into that level there so I'm keeping an eye on that to see what happens all right, I don't think there's really a lot else to say other than we're getting a little bit of movement here. Oil's steadily retraced. Um, the NASDAQ and the S&P are leading the Dow at the moment. So I would say keep vigilant because there could be a lot of trades coming up. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions or want to get in touch about the Beat the Bank strategy, message me here or get in touch via support. I will get, get back to you hopefully Friday morning with another update and see where we are then. And that's it. Stay safe, trade safe. I'll catch up with you soon.